What's up, Orange Slices, and welcome back to Pokemon Black and White 2. In the last episode, we got started on exploring the route to the north of Undella Town, but we're gonna make a little detour and head back over here. Apparently, there's another heart scale here. I don't know if they regenerate. That was completely lucky, too, because I actually wasn't even... Didn't even have the item finder dowsing machine thing on, but we're gonna take a little detour to catch ourselves our last team member. Which, uh, now that it is winter, you may have noticed there, we can actually go ahead and do that. Now, you guys should know that it is gonna be wall rain, and so here we actually have Sveal already. However, it's at a pretty dang low level, and you can actually catch them up to level 40 here, so I'm actually just gonna run away from this one. However, um, I do want to ask you guys, because it's my last team member and I went ahead and nicknamed Altaria myself, uh, what nickname would you like to see on Sfeel? That's uh, going to be the common question thing for today. It's going to be, uh, what kind of nickname on the Sfeel? And let's hope this one is level 33, actually not that bad. Um, I think Nimbus is actually male, so if we want to have a split female-male team, I think this might be a good pickup. Yep, it'll be half male, half female, and then actually... Actually, there will be one Pokemon that is, um, genderless, which is Magnezone, but I think this might actually one-hit kill it, which I'm not... Oh, gosh, I got a critical hit. Great. Let's hope I can find another one, but yeah. But definitely keep in mind the fact that it won't always be this cute little spiel that we see here. It might eventually become a majestic wall range, so keep that in mind when, uh, leaving the nickname suggestions. Apparently, one strength will kill this thing. I don't know about at level 40, which is actually probably the highest level you can catch him here, but I'm gonna hope that it uh, just catches in one Ultra Ball, and it does. So, there we go. Last team member acquired is going to be Sfeel. I actually won't be adding it to the team just yet because... Well, what is it, the clap Pokemon? Well, I guess it does clap because it's, it's a Sfeel, but yeah, there we go. Sfeel caught. And now we're back to Route 13, just a little recap of the last episode, we're gonna run through everything that we did and all the people that we battled and apparently items do respawn in the sandy areas, I guess it's probably like pearls and heart scales or something, but we're gonna head on over this way, it is actually winter now, which uh, other than us being able to catch feel, we'll probably see later on Bambi will actually change appearance because... Saucebuck and Deerling change appearance over the season, so last time we left off right around here and we're gonna go ahead and continue today by fighting the few trainers that I kind of left off and checking out whatever else might be around here like Cobalion and oh my god it's Daryl from The Walking Dead except instead of a crossbow he's got a whip apparently and he wants to triple battle us which is great because everyone knows how much I love triple battles and nose paths and there we go we finally killed Daryl that was actually a rotation battle not a triple battle so I hope people don't hate me for making a simple mistake even though people probably already hate me enough or something I don't even know but I forgot to spray a repel so there was an annoying little drift blim I'm gonna go ahead and spray one now though so that we can continue through this route peacefully without the interruption of roosters and by roosters I mean the fact that I'm back in Puerto Rico so there's a little update for today I am actually back I came back Two days ago from when this video will go up because as you guys may know I have really bad internet here so I can't really record and upload on the same days so I basically have to upload overnight and so this video is being recorded on the 2nd um, but it will go up on the 3rd of December so sorry about the no uploads in the past two days I was actually just you know coming back here kind of settling in I actually got here pretty late uh, there was a League of Legends tournament going on so I've been watching that as well so I've just been lazying around in general and uh, finally recording now because it's actually not nighttime, and I can record without the Cokies being in the background of the videos which is a good thing as always. Um, however, I did hear really another triple bat- okay this one's actually a triple battle, the last one was rotation but seriously. Either way, like I was saying, um, I can actually record now without um, having those things in the background but there are still roosters and crap so that's not really that great and yeah here you get to see Bambi with his winter form for the first time, even though it's a triple battle, so you don't really get to see the full effect here. Let's just finish this battle. There we go, we finally beat her. That was... That was way too tough. I really don't like triple and rotation battles. I don't know, I always seem to get screwed over, and they just take way too long to complete and stuff. I don't know, double battles, you know, they were fine. They were fun and whatever. They, they didn't take that long, but these triple battles, man, they just take like an hour each, and it's ridiculous, I don't know, but... Anyway, uh, this area here, I don't think we can do until later on, and there is a hidden item, but it's all the way down there. Um, over here, we've actually got Mr. Cobalion. 
Let's see what's going on. Cabra! That's, uh, that's weird. But yeah, you can actually go ahead and battle him right here and catch him. However, I will be leaving these dudes up to one separate episode, so I will be going ahead and skipping over him for now. And welcome to Lacunosa Town! Whoa, look, it's two familiar faces. Hey there, Orange. Oh, you're that lady that gave me that Master Ball. Hee <laughs> hee! I use fly, so it looks like I beat you here. Thanks for your help in Reversal Mountain. If you go straight past Lacanosa Town, you'll reach Opelucid City. But before you go, there's something I want you to, to hear. What is it? You'll know soon enough. Hurry now. Ooh. What do we have going on here? I actually don't remember a lot of this. Um, I know that there's, there's going to be some Team Plasma stuff going on soon. You must be the ones who want to hear about the old tale of Lacunosa Town. That's right. Please tell us. All right, my dearies. Please come in. Ooh. It's like we're going into this old lady's house to learn a tale of wonder and I don't know, but where's Bianca? Oh, there she is. I don't know who this is. There's just some old lady. Behind Lacunosa Town, there's a mighty big hole. Have you heard of the giant chasm? Uh, I've heard that around the giant chasm, there have been a brief temperatures negative 58 Fahrenheit. That's what Sharon told me anyway. The road is blocked, so we can't get there right now. A long, long time ago, the giant chasm was created when a big meteorite fell from the sky. A really scary Pokemon was hidden inside that meteorite. A meteorite? When darkness falls over the land, this Pokemon appears. A frigid wind follows it. It freezes everything around and eats people and Pokemon. That's why everyone was afraid. What? It eats people? So our ancestors surrounded the town with walls to prevent the Pokemon from getting inside. Also, a rule was made forbidding anyone to go outside after dark. And that is the end of the old tale. A fascinating story. I'll add it to my research records. Everyone, we should be going. Don't know why Juniper's voice changed, but hey, they left us alone in here with this old lady. That sure is a scary sounding Pokemon. Uh, that is pretty scary. I mean, a Pokemon eating people. You don't actually hear that very often, but... I don't know. I don't. I feel like it's not a folktale. Might be true. We'll find out later on. It's got the power to freeze everything around it. Could even rival the power of the legendary dragon types. Yes, Bianca. It's almost like Zekrom, who scorched Unova with intense lightning. By the way, do you remember the story of Zekrom? No. Oh, I even told you a little about it in Lentimus Town. Yeah, I know, I know, dude. I'm just kidding, okay? Chill, man. Zekrom's just a cool dude. And if you're playing Pokemon White 2, then, you know, she'll talk about Regiram and, and stuff, so... Actually, yeah, I'm playing Black 2, so... Yeah, the Meteorite. The Meteorite? Zekrom was revived from a rock called the Dark Stone. Let's suppose the Meteorite from the story and the stone are one and the same. Take into account the elements from the same area, era were found in Dragon Spiral Tower where Zekrom was, and in the Giant Chasm. It doesn't prove anything, but it could be a piece of the puzzle. Let's not write it off as a coincidence just yet. Your theories are true, should be really strong Pokemon. What kind of reason would there be for what to come out only at night? Like, if like, it doesn't like sunlight or something like that? Until we look into it more deeply, it would be hard to say anything about that. Now, what I think about the name Lacunosa could be derived from Lacanus clouds, which are clouds that resemble a net or fence. I wonder if the name is related to the part of the story where the walls were built to protect the town. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out later, but we gotta go check out Drayden, I guess. Help Bianca out, okay? Sure thing. Or actually, Bianca's helping us out, I guess. Just so you know, Opelucent City's mayor, Drayden, wrestles with his Pokemon to toughen them up. Professor Juniper, wait up! Okay, well, that's about it for that. Uh, we get to learn a nice little history lesson about Lacunosa Town here. Uh, and we're gonna go heal up now. So, all of that will actually play into stuff that will happen probably later on in the game. It appears that everyone around this town is so scared of everything going on here. And there's actually Moe's, but I don't think I want to go to him just... You know, let's just do it. I think we have time in this episode. How's it going, Moe's? What's up? Have you seen Team Plasma anywhere around here? I heard a rumor to that effect. Ooh, so it looks like my suspicions were right. Team Plasma is here. For crying out loud, 
This is troublesome indeed, my curious trainers. Perhaps I should satiate my curiosity somewhat. The reason I am still part of Team Plasma is this. I want to know how the world will change. Listen, Pokemon are nature, Pokeballs are civilization. Humans who are used to civilization don't relinquish it easily. Of course, both nature and civilization are important. But what will happen to a world taken over by Team Plasma? I don't know, but we'll find out. Let's go, Moe's. Shut your mouth. All I want is to get back a stolen Pokemon. All right, let's go. Let's battle Zinzolin and his dumb little rival grunt thing. I don't even... What is this? A grunt? Yeah, Team Plasma Grunt or something. I don't know, but we're going to go ahead and double battle with the Moe's here. Team Plasma Grunt and Zinzolin. Zinzolin uh, taking care or taking over for Getsis in this game as like the main Team Plasma villain, I guess. I don't know. Have we actually battled him before? I have no idea, but we have definitely seen him before a couple of times, so... I guess he's sort of taken over Team Plasma, wanting to revive the old ambitions of world domination of Team Rocket and stuff, I don't even know. But, we're gonna go ahead and have a nice, uh, super starter Pokemon battle here. We've got Samurott on Moses' part, and I've got my Embor, so... Overall, a pretty cool battle. We've got double the, double the starters here, and at our last evolutions. Unfortunately, my Pumbaa is at level 40 while uh, Samurott over there is at 43, so I guess Embor's not really doing too hot in levels, level-wise, and thank you Sneasel for that, that was really great. Uh, Samurott apparently did nothing in the last turn, because I didn't really see him even use a move, but we're gonna go ahead and go into Bambi, even though Bambi is, like, gonna die to these things. For some reason, I keep thinking he's Ice-type, just because he's sort of covered in ice, but he does have Jump Kick, so hopefully that can do something, I don't really know. Let's just hope for the best here on the Sneasel, considering it will be four times super effective. Whoa! Okay, that did do a lot of damage. Bambi actually looking quite nice in his winter form, I guess. But that might actually... Yeah, not the greatest idea of me to send out Bambi there. But he does get off the revenge, which might actually kill it, considering... Never mind. I don't even know how revenge works, I'm an idiot. Let's go for Tesla here, since we don't have Sfeel just yet, but by next episode I will most likely add Sfeel to the team after I look over the nicknames and whatnot. So, I actually just clicked on the wrong Pokemon, hopefully my Volt Switch still goes through and we take out this Golbat because, okay good, it does. Because I clicked on the wrong spot, I clicked on the empty spot there where Sneasel's, Sneasel used to lie, but now it's just an empty shell of what he used to be as he died or something, but uh... I'm gonna guess his last Pokemon is gonna be something that won't die to Nimbus, so I'm gonna send out Nimbus anyway, and hope for the best with our nice little heal ball. His last Pokemon is gonna be a Garbodor, so hopefully Samurott can help us out with this, because all I've got is Dragon Breath, baby! Let's find out how we do. I'm actually pretty excited, because we are getting kind of close to the last gym, kind of close to all the big major events that usually take place in these games. Um, actually, Black and White 1 did do a little bit of a switch up, uh, putting the main events after the Elite 4, actually, so I don't know if this game will do that. I actually don't remember from playing the Japanese one, and even if I did, I don't really want to spoil it for you guys, because I want to keep this exciting for myself and for you guys, you know, no spoilers here kind of thing, so Moe's keeping it real with the Hyper Potion there. Let's go ahead and take out this Garbodor and move on to greater things, and by that I mean nothing really that great, just, uh, you know, taking them out, basically, so... There we go, we beat Zinzelin and the Grunt. What a blunder to have been defeated by a man of this caliber with his with his little cotton Pokemon thing. What's with these two? I'm battling alongside Zinzelin. This shouldn't be happening. These trainers remind me of that from two years ago. More important, we must continue our research. Like that scientist said, it might be an Opelucid city. We'll play with you again later. Ooh, sounds kind of hot. Get back here! Okay, well... Nice job, Moe's. Thank you for that battle. However, that will actually end off this episode. So next time, we'll be heading on towards Opelucid City and checking out what's going on over there because everyone seems to be so excited about it. So thank you guys for watching and see you all then.